We're going to create some new perspectives together. You'll never be the same again. We never are when we listen to anything that motivates, anything that inspires, anything that presents some new perceptions and new perspectives and new ideas. I'll let you in on a secret. Maybe you know this already. And maybe you need to be reminded. You get all your money from other people. Other people give you all the money you will ever receive in your life. The more you are willing to provide service, ideas, products that you believe are valuable and worthwhile, the more other people will respond to you. Let me suggest some ideas that may be provocative for you. Some basic truths as I see them. Truth one, enjoying your money will make it easier for you to accumulate wealth. Truth two, you don't have to work hard to earn a good living. Truth three, loafing is one of the most creative, money-producing things you can do. Truth four, you can be as good a person, rich as poor, and probably better rich. You'll have more time to be better. Truth five, worrying about money has nothing to do with how much money you have. I've known millionaires who have worried constantly about money. Truth six, money is something to be loved rather than feared. Truth seven, spending money is better for your prosperity consciousness than banging it. Truth eight, money is an extension of your self-esteem, how you feel about you. Truth nine, you can't be emotionally healthy without healthy money attitudes. Truth ten, you are probably, to some extent, living your parents' money script. We'll be looking further and exploring more deeply all of these truths Let's just take a moment now to go buy them again, and I'll make some brief comments and suggestions for ways of looking at these ideas. I know they're provocative, and I know that you may not agree with them all, at least not at this moment. Truth one, enjoying your money will make it easier for you to accumulate wealth. Now, enjoying your money means really giving yourself personal pleasure. You see, your money comes to you directly as a result of the quality of your ideas, directly from your creative imagination, which is a tool of your subconscious mind. Now, your subconscious mind is very childlike. It likes to be rewarded. It likes things very simple. Now, in terms of being rewarded, the more pleasure you give yourself, the more your subconscious mind, like a little child, jumps up and down with glee and says, yes, this feels good. I'm going to provide some exciting and wonderful ideas so we can have more money and have more fun. Enjoying your money is a very simple behavior modification program that you can provide for yourself. Now, one of the most revolutionary ideas is the premise behind truth too. You don't have to work hard to earn a good living. It's obvious that hard work won't make you rich or financially secure. A lot of people work hard. They're not rich or financially secure. In fact, a very good example of this is that we have more millionaires today than ever before in history. A million millionaires in the United States alone. And a lot less hard work than a few years back. A lot of people end up after working 40 hours a week barely surviving on a retirement pension or social security payments with less income to spend than when they were working. So the only way to get ahead financially and be able to enjoy it is not to work hard, but to come up with quality ideas, with services, products, and ideas worth money. By having a healthy attitude toward money and using your creative mind to produce valuable ideas, you'll thrive where you're living easily and happily in your chosen environment without money worries and with an awareness of your own unlimited financial potential. 
you have unlimited financial potential. Truth three, loafing is one of the most creative money producing things you can do. I'm lazy and I love it. And being lazy has enabled me to develop a lot of techniques that help other people more easily perform their jobs. High performance is not hard work. High performance is smart work. And smart work comes out of ideas. And loafing is one of those ways in which you can allow your creative imagination the time to come up with the ideas that are going to make your fortune. Truth four is you can be as good a person, rich as poor, probably better rich. The reason for this is that you can have the luxury of developing your mind and your compassion when you give yourself the time that you are going to buy with the money that you'll create. Most of the wonderful philanthropic and generous acts in this century have been performed by rich people who had the time and the money to do it. Think about this. If you're a wonderful person now, aren't there many, many wonderful things you can accomplish with a lot more money that you just can't do now? So when I say you can be as good a person, rich as poor, probably better rich, I mean that you might have wonderful ideas without the money, and once you have the money, you can put those into action. Money is a vehicle for action. Truth five, worrying about money has nothing to do with how much money you have. Now that's obvious. A lot of people think, however, that when they get the money, they can stop worrying. You need to stop the worrying now. The worrying gets in the way of the money. Truth six, money is something to be loved rather than feared. Now, a lot of people don't realize that they are afraid of money. But in fact, if you are not now financially independent, there's a good chance that fear is involved at some level. Whether it's a fear that you'll have to change as a human being to produce a lot of money, or do work you won't enjoy, or that your friends won't like you anymore, or that in some way you'll be insulting your parents by making a lot more money than they ever made. Whatever those fears are, and you don't have to even know exactly what they are, it's important to understand that money is something to love. It's an extension of your personality. The money you make is an extension of who you are. And loving yourself is a very basic prerequisite to any kind of success in life. I love myself. I love my money. A simple statement to make to yourself. Truth seven. Spending money is better for your prosperity consciousness than banking it. Using money well is the secret to prosperity consciousness. It isn't accumulating a lot of money. What good will that do you? It's using it well and learning how to use it by circulating it out in the economy. And you'll see that the more you get into prosperity spending, the more prosperity you'll be able to create. Truth eight, money is an extension of your self-esteem. How you feel about yourself is projected to the outside world, and people respond to how you feel about you, and people give you money as a result of this. One of my basic statements I make to myself is I am a valuable income producing property. The more you think your ideas and your services and your products are valuable, the more other people will respond to that and give you money for them. Truth nine, you can't be emotionally healthy without healthy money attitudes. I have a friend, a very talented therapist, who can't seem to stop the treadmill she's on, no matter how much money she earns. And she earns a lot. She never feels secure. No matter how high her reputation, and it's very high indeed, she has the fear her clients will stop coming or not be able to afford to come. Her whole life is governed by vivid memories of the 1930s. And she actually said to me, no one who ever lived through the Depression can ever feel completely relaxed about money. Well, I don't believe that, and I've seen it disproved hundreds of times. 
the Depression had nothing to do with money. It was a massive collapse of the myth. It was a powerful display of poverty consciousness in which people lost their faith in themselves and the economy. And I'll tell you something, more money has been lost remembering the Depression than was ever lost during it. But remembering those fears about money, whether you really lived through the Depression or that message was handed down to you by your parents or even grandparents, that creates a negative emotional attitude. And it gets in the way of all your other emotional experience. I had a man come to me for a consultation. He had gone to a training I had conducted about 10 years ago, and he had created over a million dollars. He had $1.9 million. He knew it to the penny. And he came to me and he was worried. He was not happy. He thought once he had created a million dollars, he'd be very happy. But he wasn't. And the reason he wasn't happy was a very simple one. He didn't think he had enough. He didn't think he had enough money to take three months off and take a trip around the world. He had always wanted to do that. He thought his business would fall apart if he had taken that time off. And he thought if he had created 10 or 20 million dollars, he then had the freedom to take three months off. And in our consultation, of course, we finally figured out that it wasn't the amount of money, it was his belief about himself. That once he got emotionally healthy with himself, he would feel free. Whether he had a million, nine hundred thousand dollars, or ten million dollars, or fifty thousand dollars, he would be able to take off and do what he really wanted to do with his life. It isn't the amount of money. It's how you feel about money that matters. Truth 10. You're probably, to some extent, living your parents' money script. Your ideas and your habits and your patterns about money are antiquated. They have been handed down to you generation after generation intact. You are probably doing and thinking and feeling the same things about money that your parents felt and your grandparents felt. Now this is not to blame your parents. They gave you the best information they had, but they handed their beliefs about money to you, whether they worked for them or not. Automatically, we tend to do that. Without awareness, without understanding that those beliefs were not producing the results they really wanted. And being successful, Having prosperity consciousness is simply having beliefs that work. If you are not now financially independent so that you don't have to work for a living, so that your life is filled with leisure and pleasure and love and creative satisfaction, if that is not your current situation, then your beliefs about money and success are not ideally working for you. And when something doesn't work, it's time to consider some alternatives.